Welcome to Everything Rodeo, where we separate champions from the rest of the crowd. We'll take you down the trail of someone's life, a long haul tour rodeo, and our everyday adventures. So brace yourself, because it's fixing to be a wild ride. We're your hosts, Nace Renfrey and Cody Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Crawl Space for another episode. Episode number eight, we got our good friend, Drake Jones. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, the setup. Like, it's pretty it's fancy down pretty here. Pretty cool, man. I love yeah. it. Yeah, when good. I heard Crawl Space, I thought like literally on the bottom side of a staircase. I didn't know. <laughs> it's like a full-blown two-story basement in here. So oh, yeah. This yeah. is cool, man. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad you brought your jacket because it's pretty frigid today. Yeah, yeah. All I was I was gonna put a button up on because I'd seen other guests and I was like, you know, I just I'm gonna go a little more casual. You know, I'm home. You bet. It's funny when you you know your job. You're always in starch pants and shirts and mm-hmm. boots and hat and like for me when I come home, I don't really do much. I've got a you know a two year old that I love on and. I'm an avid golfer, but uh, oh my goodness, I know, right? <laughs> Every yeah, episode, took a turn. <laughs> but so when I come home, I it's funny when you have to be in all that stuff all the time. How you don't want to be? How in you it. don't want to be in it when you don't have to be in it? You know, so Drake's kind of famous on TikTok. Some of his uh, videos from Shaping Hats popped up because you know the algorithm, and I like cowboy stuff. Oh so yeah, it yeah. popped up, and I met him, and like I started following him. I didn't meet him, but um, I seen that he worked for Shorties and. Started following him, and then the uh, other day, like two days ago, he popped up on my um, story again, and it was him in Bentonville. I'm like, <laughs> you live in Bentonville? So I went into stalker mode and figured out where he lives, and he lives just right down the road. So yeah. I was like, hey, man, you want to come join us in the crawl space? And Heck yeah. Yeah. Dude, and it's been a wild week with all the weather and everything, too. So yeah. glad you finally – we finally got something lined up for this week. Oh, so yeah. So glad you came. I, dude, like I said, I'm when I walked in, I was like, oh, this – you know, I said it earlier, but I was like cross space on, you know, I thought we was going to be in here. T- I'm a big old boy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's, it's, I get that all the time. People are like, you're from Arkansas. I'm like, well, East Texas boy fell in love with Arkansas girl. Kind of pulled country, you up country here. Song but, right there. No yeah. Let's write right? a song. Yeah. Um, I, I play a little bit of guitar and, uh, that, uh, oh, one right here I know, by chance. I know I'm out of practice, but, uh, <laughs> that song, Oklahoma girl by, uh, I think it's Eli Young band. Oh yeah, oh, that is a good I song. play it for my wife sometimes, but I put Arkansas Girl in there. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. Does it bring well, a tear to her eye? I think she tells me she likes me playing, but like anytime I start playing, she goes into another room. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's not the words that tells you; it's the actions. No. Yeah, and I, I dude, it's I like I my case that I have costs more than the guitar I have. It's like. A, <laughs> <laughs> a Starcaster, 2001 model Starcaster that I traded a ball cap for back uh, in high school. Nice. You bet. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I hate this weather. Yeah. Yeah. East yeah. Texas guy. Yeah. It's yeah I was say, I've seen more freezing. snow in the three years I've lived in Northwest Arkansas than I have my whole life. It's wild. It'll be 70 degrees. And next week we got freezing, you yeah. takes power out and everything. Yeah. Like we had three podcasts lined up for this week. Yeah. And Everybody canceled. Cause yeah. Uh, we, yeah. Just because the snow Nobody couldn't can make get here it. and stuff. Yeah. So. I know that's um, – I was supposed to actually be in New Orleans this past week. There was a um, uh, a show that uh, NCBA, so National Cattle Breeders Association, yeah. yep. and they move around, but it was in New Orleans. This, and it's a show I've done the last three years, but um, I swapped it with one of our other guy just because he hadn't had no work in a while. Oh, yeah. I was kind of wanting to be home. I just picked the wrong week. Yeah. yeah. So all these shows you, you – Tell us a little about what, who you work for, what yeah, you yeah, do, because yeah, so, you're, um, and, and your TikTok too, because that's how Cody found you is shaping hats. That's so. you know, it's funny because um, I run our social media for for our company, Shorty's Cowboy Hattery, out of Oklahoma City. Um, but we don't have a TikTok. We kind of run it through mine. Most of mine is hats. I do mm-hmm. some some stuff with the wife and and everything. But uh, so I'm more or less I'm a traveling hat salesman for yeah. the most part, and. Uh, I do more than just that per se. Uh, we kind of touched on it, but um, I travel around and, and sell hats at rodeo events, yeah. horse shows, just regular trade shows, shows. like NCBA um, convention stuff like that uh, for shorties. 
Um, I don't. We have a factory in Oklahoma City, but it's got a storefront in it. But a lot of people don't realize um, it's just five thousand square feet. Yeah, it's oh, a little bitty yeah, building. It's a right. little bitty, and we've um, we've been so busy the last three years or so that we have doubled our employees in that building. <laughs> And we have not doubled the space. Got but, no uh, elbow room. Oh man, it, it's literally like two of these. Uh, our crawl spaces put yeah. together. I mean, it's it's the showroom is this big. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. it's five thousand square feet. The the storefront is uh, I think just a hair over a thousand square feet. Wow. And then Shorty's got a big office in there, but the rest of it is uh, it's storage for the hats we build. Mm-hmm. So we're a custom hatter, but we do because we do so many shows. People kind of instant gratification um they do want hats now so we do sell that but for the most most of our business is they sit you hats. down we measure you we build the hat to your head it's pretty cool you get that's your awesome. name in it all that jazz so that's super cool. um you know you get your name in there yeah oh wow yeah and then you know a lot of people are the the two dollar bill i keep a i keep a two-piece in there but it's my wife and my daughter Thing. A little Polaroid picture, you know. That's, That's cool. awesome. Before the daughter, it was a different type of Polaroid picture. But <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your hair. I cut it all off. Why? Uh, it's a real long story. Just was ready for a change, man. Yeah, it cut, looks good though. I Is that it. natural? Like you got into the natural flow? Kind of. Um, I grew it long for baseball um, after after high school, and then. Um, uh, with the job I had for Cavenders, um, I was doing some marketing stuff for them for several years. They actually paid me to cut it, to keep it cut. Oh. So when I got pushed out of that job a little bit, um, I was like, well, I'm going to let it grow out again. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of left it long since then. And I jokingly say it's because all the men in my family are bald and like we're, we're bald by like 25 so i was like heck yeah if i, I got it, it i'm gonna keep gone. it you know <laughs> I cut it it's gone so and it's just a i mean it's a hassle man yeah. um it's real nice to to wake up and not have to worry about putting on a cap because otherwise it's in your face and and like mine's not naturally curly like that. it is mine this is permed is it yeah i like it that's cool man <laughs> i love it i like the whole vibe and yeah. that's i i don't know everybody says it it makes me like it's an unprofessional look, you know. Oh, dude! And I'm like, dude, I shake I think, hats for I, a living. Like, yeah, I bet it, it. I mean, it goes with the. I think, yeah, the persona, the persona of like, you know, I don't, I don't consider myself a cowboy per se because that's not the lifestyle I live. Yeah. But I enjoy a hat and I enjoy boots and and you know, I grew up in a town of 200 people. I, I've been on the back of horses and and pushed cattle and and I've done that stuff, but it's not what I do. It's not my job. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, especially on TikTok, oh, my Lord, it's like, oh, he ain't no cowboy. <laughs> Everybody, I, you're right, I'm not. You got know? the little keyboard warriors. Yeah, on the, yeah. oh, man. Section. And it's funny because the ones that always have so much negative to say, you click on their profile. and <laughs> they I'm not going to go cowboy. at anybody unless I got some ammo, you know? Yeah. And uh, and I, I tell myself, like, it's funny because the videos that, that get, like, the most views and stuff are always the ones where you say something kind of controversial. You oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you, pot oh, a little yeah. bit. 1100 comments on this mm-hmm. and it's all about a thousand dollars nobody spends a thousand dollars and the best comment which i tagged jeff in one of them but there's hundreds of them that say no real cowboys wearing a thousand dollar hat right <laughs> so i tagged jeff in it i said uh-huh. jeff i guess you're not a real cowboy because <laughs> because ain't no cowboy no user two three nine seven six one two says you're not a cowboy <laughs> And uh, Jeff's like, well, I guess I gotta hang all my my stuff up because I'm because user one two you know user one two three four five yeah I would love to f- I would let's see oh that is that. funny dude uh but there's there's one comment on here that you know like the little click down of mm-hmm. all the comments on it someone was like thousand dollars on a hat <laughs> and all these honkies uh, get mad at me spending four hundred dollars for my Jordans or something oh yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, I've always been a big proponent of, like, I don't go out to piss people off. I don't. Yeah. But when you get to the social media side of things, um, I just feel like it's it's funny to kind of throw a little stab at something, you know, like the uh, 
some of the videos on there that I'm, I'm poking fun at Yellowstone, which I'm, you know, I don't know if y'all talked about that with any of your guests, but Yellowstone's been a big deal with yeah, the Western Yellowstone's world. helped us a bunch. It's pushed, and and I'm I'm grateful for it. And um, Taylor Sheridan's actually worn our hats for years. He's mm-hmm. got a, a deal with American now, but yeah. uh, I've shaped a couple hats for him at this show that I'm actually about to go to. But I. I, you know, I'm grateful for that. And he's he's pushed a ton of people into the Western industry and stuff, and that's that's wonderful. But it's just kind of fun to to poke at it, you know. Oh, yeah. And that's right. like, you know, the 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 joking about people wanting a, a rip hat or you know, stuff, oh, yeah. an AC yeah. hat. And it's like, I did one video where it's like, hey, if you want a rip hat, this is what you do. You go buy one from Walmart. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Dunk that. it in the pond. <laughs> take the hat band off of it. There you go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, got your rip hat. <laughs> oh man, people, people are like, man, they're spending the money. You know, let them, let them, you know, do whatever they want to it. Shape the hat, take the money, yeah. be quiet. You know, and it's like, I will. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna make fun of you. When I'm you gonna make fun of you. Why I do it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but super, super grateful for that because it's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not old enough to to know the push that like Urban Cowboy had on the industry yeah. mm-hmm. back when it came out, but. You know, I've been in the industry long enough and worked around people that have been in the industry long enough to know that, like, this is that essence of, of you know, everybody now wants to be a cowboy. Right. Yeah, between, you know, between Yellowstone, the Cowboy Channel. Oh, man. And COVID. It, it like, really pushed the Western, oh, it's crazy. Western industry. I, and I, I love it because um, I've been a part of it now for – it's 2023 so like going on 10 years Mm -hmm. and uh i've you know working for cavenders for several years um on both sides the retail side and kind of doing some corporate stuff for them you see the growth Mm -hmm. and it's like you know can't talk numbers and i don't work for them anymore but um talking to people that still work at that company it's like they've seen exponential growth it's yeah. crazy yeah it is and it's like well where does it stop <laughs> yeah because we're still it's, here and i think the you know it's we're just in the starting to up climb i think it's just going to keep on getting bigger i think uh and especially with taylor still pushing um the shows and stuff yeah and he's I, put bringing out new ones and yeah and um something really cool that he's doing uh like i said he don't he don't ride for us anymore he's with american but uh a show that he started about four years ago, Run for a Million, mm-hmm. which is a reigning show, which yeah. I know isn't technically the the rodeo side of things, but uh, it's a million dollar show. Yeah, it's yeah. one reigning pass, yeah. and there's they qualifiers for it, but pay it's out a million dollars. Yeah, yeah so deal. first place five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, which um, NRHA doesn't recognize that money towards points earnings, but um, He's worked it with NRHA, NCHA, and NRCHA, which is the cutting cow horse, reigning cow horse, that at the American this year, which is, you know, I know there's bigger rodeos out there, but that's yeah. American, you know. It's a yeah. chance at the big dollars, you know. Um, the day before, the top five in each one of those associations get a chance at a million now, too. Oh, sweet. So I don't know if y'all have heard that. Yeah, I, I kind of seen uh, a little bit of it, but I didn't know if it was – like when I seen it, I didn't know if it was a set deal or not yet. It's um, well, and you know, some people aren't big proponents of the Teton Ridge deal. The guy that started that, Thomas Tolls, got several hats from us. And you know, I've, I I see it both sides. People are like, you know, he's just going to come in, he's going to be gone, and you know, the Chinese backed money. I've met the guy, mm-hmm. good guy. He don't drink, don't smoke, don't gamble. He hates Vegas, like, and that's where we've met him. Um, uh, I think he's got a good, good. I think there's push a good. I think it, there's a good vision there. Yeah, and and he's bought up like he's tried to buy up everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean at least I mean at least he's got somebody backing him. Yeah, I mean, well it, it might be China, but at least he's got somebody backing him. Well, I yeah. think that the and don't quote me on this, but um, the the push behind that was he sold a company, his an entertainment company, for like three point six billion. Wow, billion with a B. Yeah, it's big, you know. <laughs> And that's where a lot of that's coming, but it 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 was sold to a Chinese company. Yeah. So they're like, oh, it's Chinese money. No, it's his money. It's just, his money now. Yeah. So, but yeah. you know, he bought up the BBR mm-hmm. Better Barrel Races, which is, Huge. you know, we do that show in Oklahoma City, and it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's they did like five thousand runs in a in, week, 
six days. Yeah, that's three crazy. arenas, and that's that's a maturity, that's a open junior, all that stuff. But that's, I mean, you know, we uh, it's so big for us that we've done the USTRC mm-hmm. the last four or five years. Well, it overlaps this year. Mm-hmm. Guess which one we're doing? You're going to BBR. BBR, and it's it's not a shot at Team Ropers. It's just that show is a is a straw hat show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need straw hats for that show. I don't know if y'all have tried to buy a straw hat here lately. No, it's no. it's hard. Yeah. Really, can't get them, and the prices of them are, you know, and that's that's a. I need a, to get my order in. Yes, <laughs> that's a, and we just got like nine hundred straw hats from Rodeo King. We're still waiting on orders from American. Yeah, you know, and it's it's no shot at American. They just business has mm-hmm. went up, yeah. and um, there's not a whole lot in Bowie. And now I think they got like half the town working for the. Yeah, they yeah. do. The uh, I go down there about once a month for the horse sale there in Bowie. Yeah, and. I mean, everybody you meet that's in the town work like yes. The, like our waitress one night, she was she worked at the Mexican restaurant, but she said that she also worked at the Hat Company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, they're the whole town works uh, there. A, a friend of mine, Cody Crawford, uh, is the production manager there, yeah. assistant product. He used mm-hmm. to be at Best, and uh, we go down there and pick straw hats up from him. And he was telling me, he said, "Man, if, if they can pass a drug test, we'll hire them." Yeah, really. Because I mean, they just can't get. I mean, can't get can't build them help. fast enough, yeah. you know. And I've got buddies over at Resist All too, and it's they do their production a little different because all theirs is scheduled production, where Americans taking orders and pushing orders. But um, in saying that, it's 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 hard because the demand is higher than it's ever been, and the supply chain is is. Probably not as bad as it's ever been, but it's pretty it's, bad, yeah. bad, you know, in comparison to the uh, the demand for it, and especially like what we were talking about. I think Yellowstone has pushed a ton of people that way, but like what we do at Shorties, who I work for, we do the higher end hats, yeah, like cheapest hat we makes a fifty x, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't think it's pushed a whole lot of new people to us, but what it's done is it's pushed new people to. Like starter quality hats, mm-hmm. and uh, and what that's done is push people that have always worn kind of the, the middle of the road hat to yeah. a higher quality hat. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't think it's like oh I want to have a better hat than him. It's just you know yeah. I think I, you, I got a shorty's hat, but it don't fit me no more. So oh we can reblock it. I got to get a new one. <laughs> yeah, how like how far off is it? It's like way off. Okay. Yeah, because we can my, actually like, remake our hat to a bigger well, size. The I, problem I is, actually I sent it back to you, and it it made it like it was it was barely fits, but it fits my wife now. So I'm just yeah, gonna, just let it roll. Yeah, yeah. that's my. I, what size do you wear? Seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. I'm a seven and five eighths. Yeah. Oh, well. so I've got this is my second navy. I don't know if you can see this. It probably looks black. I'm just not a black hat guy. Yeah, man. I got two that sit in the closet. It looks good. Yeah, on the light. Dude, I want it right here. So for Vegas this year, I'm gonna get some freaking red suede boots. Come on, and a red hat, and then like the the shiny paisley jacket. Yep, that's freaking yeah. That's nice. like Did y'all go to Vegas there. this year? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, dude. This is so I didn't go to work this year because. Um, as much as some of the rodeo stuff we do, most of what Shorty does is the horse show, which yeah, yeah. I I always call it the Western industry because mm-hmm. it's it's everything, right? right? Like yeah, I mean the Western industry. I mean it how can, many it can go from dressage to yeah, you know. and you know, um, and we've done it all, man. We've done the Arabians, like we do a couple of Arabian shows. Most of what we do is raining and AQHA because we're the official hat for yeah. those two associations, and we do the cutting course um shorty has cutting the horses mm-hmm. that's been a big part of her life for a long time but uh she loves the kids so a lot of the youth or a lot of the rodeos we do are youth rodeos oh wow so like we were talking about jeff lee earlier yeah that's my guy but i met him at the i flower the international okay. yeah he youth had, rodeo. he's announced that for the last yes. like 10 yeah years. oh man long time so uh i guess it was a couple years ago where he come to buy a straw hat and i I'd, I'd seen him before Mm-hmm. But I think the first year I did that show, I was still living in Fort Worth. Yeah. And uh, something was said about Siloam. Mm-hmm. And at that time, uh, we had just moved to Gentry. But I was like, you live in Siloam? I said, I live in Siloam. <laughs> and he's like, no, you don't. I said, I swear, like, pulled up the address. He didn't believe me. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, like, since then, uh, every time I see him, we talk, not regularly, but, yeah. you know, he's ordered a hat and... uh He's even made the joke that, 
and he bought one actually. He yeah. bought a little Jiffy steamer. Oh yeah, oh, nice. but he made the joke. He said, "Man, I'm gonna put a shed and a full blown steamer at the back of the house. And you just come by on the weekends, <laughs> Anytime, and we'll yeah. do hat shaping parties. Man, we'll barbecue <laughs> That'd be sweet. and that'd be cool. And I think he's serious. We, about it. we really do need a good hat shaper around <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, we do. Like I take, I'd set something up in the corner right there for yeah. you. <laughs> oh yeah, I do. Yeah, that. I mean, now I know where to go. I'm just yeah. gonna come down to your house. Yeah, and yeah. Bring come on. a pot of water. Come on. That's, that's how, um, <laughs> even even my wife wants to. Uh, I think. Like when I come home, because I'm on the road a bunch, I don't, like I said, I don't do much, but it's funny because she'll be like, do you need a hobby or something? Like Dude. something that you can still do so, at the house. So at Tulsa two weekends ago for the ACRA finals, mm-hmm. there was a hat bar and my wife built her a hat. Like, you know, how the girls put mm-hmm. all the little stuff yeah. on their hats and stuff now. You know, Northwest Arkansas would be an awesome place for that. That would be pretty cool. You know, we could have shorties Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, you know, and uh, I told y'all earlier, I guess this could be like an official announcement, but I'm yep. going to step away from, from doing, you know, last year I did 22 shows. I was on the road a, like 236 days. It's a long crazy. time to be gone. I know, and it's like, you know, I, we do a bunch in Oklahoma City because that's like the hub for mm-hmm. horse shows. Yeah. That are, that facility there is it's just, it's outside of Scottsdale maybe. Um, Oklahoma City is one of the, the better facilities when it comes to horse shows, just the way the facility set up, you can be in barn nine and not ever see daylight and yeah, get no. to the arena. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Um, we do a ton of stuff there. Like I think we do, I do six shows there, but, uh, you know, when people ask, they say, what's your job? Your hat shaper, right? And I'm like, well, I am, but there's a lot more to it. You know, yeah. I, I jokingly call myself, um, cause shorty's a small company. Yeah. You know, we've got like 18 employees mm-hmm. and 15 of them are at the factory. And there's yeah. three of us, two of us really, that that travel around and do events and stuff. So I, I jokingly call myself a special events coordinator. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's it's logistics. It's it's gotta figure setting out how the booth to get up, everything getting there, labor yeah. to help, you know. And then um, Shorty's been doing it for 30 years. So a lot of times I'll show up at a place and – some guy walk up, be like, "Hey man, I'm so and so. I've been helping Shorty set her booth up for thirty years." You're like, like "Okay, cool, <laughs> yeah, come on." And he'll he'll be like, and I'll think, "Okay, he's probably helped a few times, and he knows exactly where stuff is in the trailer." Yeah, you know? he like he knows how to set it up. You don't. Oh have man, to I'm nothing. like I'm like man, I'm like, I'm gonna run to the <laughs> store and get something to eat. Then if you you know, but I, I'm I would rather do it myself. I'm very particular, mm-hmm. yep. you know, and like even my wife tells me she's like, "Not everything has to be done." exactly you know and i'm like yes it does yeah i'm very struck i I jokingly i'm not organized or clean but i'm structured yeah you know what i mean so that's good i don't know yeah i think it's all right thing my kind of the same way like my like i build fence and stuff so like all my tools in my trailer and stuff oh man i just throw it everywhere but i know exactly where everything is (laughs) yeah that's the deal that's um shorty went to a show in arizona and um, I don't go to it because it's called Art of the Cowgirl, and mm-hmm. it's this big. It's like um, I explain it uh, for y'all that don't know what it is, but it's it's like Red Steagall, mm-hmm. but for women. Yeah, you know, instead of being a cowboy gathering, it's a cowgirl gathering. It's in Queen Creek, and they go out there, and she's calling me like every ten minutes. Hey, where's this? Where's this? Because <laughs> we've got three different booth setups, and they all stay on a very particular trailer. Mm-hmm. So she's calling me. Where's this? And I'm like, well, it's in the steamer table on the left side under. She's like, well, why is it there? It should be over here. I'm like, that's where I always keep it. That's just I, I know to go back. To yeah, and if you're so, the only one that, that runs that trailer, it. then you yeah. know where it's well, always at. And that's the the booth that I'll take to um, the Cow Horse World Championships it's all gonna here be in different two days. Spots oh now. man, and <laughs> it's, it's outside. They set up in a tent because oh, yeah. Shorty is actually the uh, they have these. Uh, clinics and stuff out there but shorty's the master hatter mm-hmm. that goes out there so she like one day that uh, they've got like a master silversmith a master saddle maker okay all this jazz um she's the master hatter mm. and uh, to my knowledge um you know and if anybody's out there that knows something different she's the only female based hatter you know i know some other ones that you know i, I think they're like on the cowgirls and indians yeah, she, Cowboys and uh, Indians yeah. that she was just in. I she think was they just mentioned in. something about that. And I, because there's a few people out there that 
women do it, but they didn't like start it. Yeah. And yeah. that's not to like she started discredit it. From the beginning, it. Right. She started it completely by herself. She had help from her sister. Yeah. Um, that helped her for a long time. And her brother helped her a little bit, but she started it under her name as her, you know, and that's, I, to my knowledge, she's the only hat maker that's female that has done that. Right. But, you know, I, I, she's 76 years old. She got into it a little late. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, everybody's like, she's retired. I'm like, no, <laughs> she's still the face of it. She's, she wants to be at every show. And, um, I, which I, I like her being at shows because there's yeah. people that won't buy from us unless she's around. She don't do any of the measuring or the shaping anymore, but if she's not sitting at her little table with a martini in her hand, they won't buy half. The, the, <laughs> the famous shorties martinis. The, the shortinis, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I I made a video about making one when we were in Columbus, and it, like, yeah, people loved it. They're yeah, like, that's, yeah. that's a martini? Because it's literally just a shot and a half of Tito's vodka and, like, a, a thimble of a cap full. Oh, and it's the nastiest <laughs> martini mix ever, too. You know, buy it in Texas. And jokingly, I, I tell people Shorty's got stock in, in Tito's because yeah. it's like, <laughs> like when we go to shows, like when we go down to uh, Rodeo Houston, we're there for a month. Mm-hmm. You know, the show's technically only like 22 days, I think. Oh, but by the uh, time you go and set well, up, and the way they layer you in there, you can only enter through the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, th- that's a stock show. Yeah. People get confused and they go, oh, it's a giant concert. It's a month long. No, that's a stock show on rodeo. That's, that's like that complex is like 22 acres. It's oh, huge. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. 2.6 million people come through there last year. Jeez. Which it is a record, but I think, you know, when you don't have it a year, it oh, brings yeah. a lot of people. Everybody wants to yeah. get out. And they cut us in half the year before. We yeah. were only open for like, I think, 10 days because mm. – I was actually still with Cavenders, and I was down there when they, they're like, "Hey, we're," and I'm like, "What do you mean?" Yeah, they're like you got to go home. I'm like, "It's Rodeo Houston." They're like, "Well, yeah. there's COVID here." I'm like, "You got one case in Houston." Yeah, <laughs> and you're you're gonna shut down something that brings you know millions of dollars, two hundred and fifty million dollars in profit to the yeah. city, and especially I, I I couldn't see it happening because Houston was already hurting from the hurricane. Oh, yeah. I'm like, how do you lose? You know, that's politics, I guess. You're getting back into that. So, so yeah, so I travel around, do trade shows. I do our social media. and um, uh, But uh, that's, yeah, that's me. That's awesome, man. Sweet. I know a lot of people just see me as a hat shaper, but yeah. like I was telling y'all earlier, I I do more than that. So, like, I, you know, short answer, sales rep for yeah. Shorty's Hattery. Oh, yeah. So, man, it's fun. Yeah. I don't, I don't like being gone all the time, but – Nowhere else outside of like living in or working out of Fort Worth or, or mainly Fort Worth because there's something going on every, every week, week in there. In there. Yeah. You you can't touch as many people um, customer wise. You can't reach as many people without being on the road. Yeah, and that's why so many hat companies have, especially custom hatters. You got to have eighty percent of our business yeah. is on the road. Right. Mm-hmm. So have you had have you had any opportunities to shape hats for celebrities or anything like that? Um, yeah, I, you know, I the company I used to work for we won't, we won't I won't call anybody's name out, but I was a, a name dropper because yeah. uh, the company I used to work for I worked out of the corporate location, so we always had company owners in, mm-hmm. and I got a chance to meet a lot of them. Um, but so I I. I'm not the top to be like, oh, yeah, I did this, yeah. and I did this. Right. But uh, when I lived in Tyler, Texas, uh, y'all know who Cowboy Troy is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Texas I, hit. Oh, he yeah, was with dude. Big and Rich, dude, did oh, a man. Of songs. Yeah. He's still with them. He still travels yeah, really? and sells them. Yeah, I talk to him every <laughs> once in a while. That's That's, awesome. that's one of the cool ones because um, I ran into him in Vegas, I guess, two years ago and, like, hadn't seen him in four years since I moved to Fort Worth. And he was like, Drake. I was like. And, you know, you don't recognize him. He's 6'6". Oh, yeah. You know, 270, 280 pounds. He's a big dude. Yeah. Uh-huh. If he don't have a cowboy hat on, you don't, I mean, you don't recognize him. Yeah. But he recognized me because the hair, I had a little bit longer hair, you know. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I hadn't seen him, but uh, I met him because he used to come in. He has triplets. Oh, really? He oh, has cool. uh, boy triplets, and they are massive, too. They are like, they're 12 <laughs> years old, and they're six foot tall. It's that But... That's one of the cooler ones because because I've met him and talked to him, yeah. but 
Uh, over in Tyler, man, there's Joe Nichols lives over there. Oh, yeah. so I've done, I'm sure a bunch of guys coming through there. He don't really wear hats, but <clears> like when, if he had something going where he had to wear one, that, and then um, Pat Green used to come in the store a bunch, which yeah. being a, you know, a Texas guy, yeah. that Texas country back in like the early 2000s, that Pat yeah. Green was Texas country, right. you know. Um, outside of that, um, we do some of those um, – those higher dollar horse shows, you get a lot of people that not necessarily rodeo or show horses, but they own the horse yeah, or they yeah. own the bull or mm-hmm. stuff. Right. So um, I've done several hats for Taylor Sheridan, which cool. he's with American now, but he, yeah. he still shows in a shorties when he shows mm-hmm. cow horses or cuts. Yeah. Um, or he, he was anyways. And then his wife, Nick, who I think is a bigger superstar than he is. I've done several yeah. hats for her and she's cool. Um, Outside of that, another one that uh, I brag about is Terry Bradshaw. Oh, oh heck yeah. yeah. Terry's got a lot of money in the horses. Oh, yeah. His daughter's show and his wife's, and he mm-hmm. shows, he shows halter horses. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, he's uh, like one of the biggest halter breeders around. Man, yeah. And I think he sold out a bunch of them here a couple months he, ago. But He moved, and they sold their place, and then something happened where the money didn't go through, so they had to move back because they're just south Oklahoma City. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, he was telling me at the, the uh, AQHA World Show that he, they're going to turn that back into a, a cattle ranch because that's oh, what sweet. it was yeah. before they turned it into uh, horses. But he got big old head. <laughs> oh, yeah. He got big. Yeah. It's like almost a size eight. Oh my goodness! Oh, big old Dude, head, big old brain in there. You have to use a bunch of beaver to put that one together. Oh man, I'm telling you, that's. But um, he just randomly wants to buy a hat anytime yeah. you see him. That's awesome. But that's he cool. he's another one that like he knows my name. Yeah. yeah, like he knows me as a shorty guy, and then Drake, right? Yeah. You know, so, mm-hmm. but that's that's pretty cool to to have somebody that's like prominent in yeah. the world. You know, yeah. he's still on TV and stuff. Right. Yeah, I seen a special on him and. What the Duck Dynasty guy, Phil yep. Robertson, uh-huh. on how that Terry was actually Phil's backup. I asked him about it. Yeah. And, like, you know, I always thought it was, like, just a ploy to, like, push. No, it's true. No. Really? Like, you can look 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 it up. Yeah. Like, there's stats on it that Phil started over like him Phil should have went, went on to the pro ball. And and if, if Phil wouldn't have went duck hunting and started, uh, you know, making the calls and all that, yeah. then Phil would probably be where Terry is now. Yeah, like Terry probably yeah, wouldn't. Hall of Fame you know, quarterback. Like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, if he wouldn't have got hurt or whatever. I did ask Terry about that because, you know, the story is he was at practice and saw ducks flying over and just walked out. <laughs> Terry said that's a little bit of a stretch. But yeah. it was more or less he wanted to hunt Yeah, and, and practice was getting in the way. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, I just, you know, football's fun and all, but this is my life. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how things push you that way, man. And right. what's cool is it worked out for both of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Both of them are very, very successful, very well wealthy, known. wealthy men. Yeah. Yes. And, and both both of them are, are men of God, too, yeah. which yeah. is cool. Yeah. You know, but yeah, there's other ones, but it's it's more or less, I get to meet all these people because of Shorty. Yeah. You yeah. Know, she went in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame mm-hmm. two years ago. And it's, I think that's helped our business a bunch along with, you know, Yellowstone and, and these other things. But, um, you know, like we were talking about the, uh, Cowboys and Indians come yeah. out. Yep. And, um, yeah, that was just like last week, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. They, dude, they did it like a year ago. Oh, wow. It was they just, when they, they started just and they it. just pushed it out. Wow. Um, which is, um, you know, the, ep- or not the episode, but, um, article, the article, oh, yeah. there you go. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Like I read I, it. I read just a piece of I it. I read it through Facebook, yeah, I haven't which, you know, it, probably yeah. terrible, but I know it, She's, if you ask her, when she went into that, Shorty hates talking about herself. Mm-hmm. You know, she'll she'll take the credit because she knows, you know, everybody sees all the big fancy trucks and the big booths and, you know, us selling nice hats, but they didn't see the first 15, 20 years of her struggling. And, oh, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, she's been around for, what, 25 30, years? 32 years. years. Okay. This wow. is year 33 for her. So yeah, 1990 yeah. is when she started. Yeah, and I mean, I remember when I was a little kid that like going to Oklahoma City and and stuff. We'd always go into the, the hat store there, but yeah, I mean it it was just an Oklahoma City thing. Now yeah. it's world or I know that's, wide. Um, I can't. You know, we do shows from Georgia to Scottsdale. Yeah, like we did fifty six shows last year. That's crazy. And uh, you know, it's it's mainly you know it's not always a new place. Uh, the NCBA's moves around that show, but most of them are kind of 
concreted in where, mm-hmm. where they're going to stay. Right. You know, they moved the, the USTRC a couple years yeah, ago from Fort Oklahoma Worth. City to Fort Worth. But for the most part, it's 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 Vegas, Scottsdale. Uh, we used to do several shows in Amarillo, but um, Vegas, Scottsdale, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Memphis, Houston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's you know, it's pretty much the same shows every year just because – a lot of those shows were the were the official hat. Yeah, like we're the official hat for the American Quarter Horse Association. Yeah, we're the official hat for the National Reining Horse Association. So we do all the those national level shows for sure. So yeah. so how did you how did you like originally start shaping hats? Um, grew up in a little bitty town, and fell in love with um, Mr. Sally had a Western Wear store called Rodeo Western Wear in Jewett, Texas. Okay, I tried to live in that place and kind of. Messed around with hats in high school. and uh, So you were high school, like in high school? I messed with it, yeah, for yeah. sure. And um, I didn't really grow up rodeoing. My dad uh, went to Boys Ranch in Amarillo, Cal Farley. So he, he grew up on a working ranch, which mm-hmm. it was you know, more of a boy's home. And uh, he team roped, and, but he was a tie-down guy mainly. So, so I was around him when he roped in high school and stuff, but sports kind of kept me away from it. We messed around with it. Yeah. When I got in college, uh, Cross Brand Cowboy Church over in Tyler, Texas. Oh, yeah. One of the nicest arenas you've ever seen at really a Cowboy nice. Church. It's, uh, but we used to do some some ranch rodeo stuff over there, and me being a little bigger guy, I hung out with little guys. Yeah. So we were uh, we were mugging folks, you know, double-time mugging champions a couple times over there. But it was, like I said, I hung out with, with short, little, little stocky <laughs> guys. So me being a bigger guy, you know what? What uh, what position I took in that event? He was getting the head. <laughs> we was on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, long story short, I went to college in Tyler, and that is the corporate location for Cavenders, which is, you know, outside of Boot Barns, the largest Western wear company in the world. Um, to keep it brisk, just uh, I was a personal trainer for a little while, and got in touch with some people that work for the corporate office. They got word that I've messed with hats and, and stuff like that. So started there just as a seasonal deal. Yeah. And then about eight months into that, um, I the store manager kept me on through seasonal, and then he handed me a set of keys eight months later and said, hey, I want you to be my assistant manager. Wow. So I didn't know where I was going to go with that, kind of prayed on it, and it pushed me towards working with Cavenders. And then shortly after, I, I decided, hey, yeah, I'll – you know, I kind of pushed the personal training thing mm-hmm. aside. Um, I started doing some marketing stuff with them because mm-hmm. they're um, the lady that ran their whole marketing set was in the basement of the store. So at that, that time, that the retail store was on top of the corporate office, the yeah. buying office, and all that. So wow. that's how I got the chance to meet, like, um, not dropping names, but just some people that that own companies in the world, Huey, Wrangler, stuff like that, got yeah. to meet some higher-ups and um, started doing events for Cavenders along with doing a bunch of marketing stuff. So my face was was mainly my butt was on Every catalogs jeans, for yeah. Cavenders. Yeah, um, <laughs> my butt and my back. That was, uh, you know, and they tell you, uh, oh, we're just saving your face so we can keep using you, you know. But, <laughs> We'll take it how it is, but uh, just got in the limelight like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always being either at events where there are people that are, you know, quote unquote important, right. um, and that's kind of how I met Shorty. So oh, nice. six years in the Cavenders, um, I bought a couple hats from Shorty at Rodeo Houston, mm-hmm. um, and then when I got ready to move to Arkansas, I was gonna hang it all up. I was leaving the Western industry. Um, uh, I'd made friends with Shorty and Bobby. Bobby kind of runs the show over there. Uh, been with Shorty for about 22 years. And uh, she calls me. She said, hey, what's your plan? I said, well, I'm going to be an electrician. She's like, is that what you really want to do? I was like, no. She's like, why not help us with a few shows in between things? So um, that would have been right when COVID started. Yeah. We stayed busy. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody's like, oh, I bet y'all are happy to be out when COVID kind of started to flow. We we were still at it because mm-hmm. we were doing barrel races, team ropings. We were doing goat ropings if we could make some money doing it, you know. Yeah. But um, 
uh, after about two shows with her, she was like, hey, like, you want to do this kind of more full time? I was like, yeah, I'd love to. Because mm-hmm. I'd always been on the management side of things, so mm-hmm. I jokingly told people I was a boot guy that really liked hats. Yeah. Because as, as impressive as my hat collection is, my boot collection is is out there. So Yeah, it says picture. Oh, man. I, I'll show you a video here when we get done <laughs> here, but I, I keep 10 or 12 pairs of boots in, like, each trailer. Depending on which, really? Show. Oh yeah, Dag dang gum. dude, I wish I had. I got three pair of boots. Yeah, I, was say I got three pairs. <laughs> well, all the marketing stuff I did for Cavaners, I got paid a certain way that I could only spend money at the store, oh, which yeah. worked out for me though because you just buying boots all the time. I was the only person that got an employee discount on top of getting the marketing. Yeah, all, everybody else that did like the freelance stuff for yeah. us. Uh, was, weren't employees. They were just like freelance models. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I tell people marketing stuff because I don't like saying I was a model because it's kind of, you know, I was. You're just I'm, trying to be humble. I was I a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was more of a a, a stand in, but uh, yeah. uh, but so I had to spend it on something. Yeah, might know? as well spend it on some boots. And, and right. I I had one hat that I really liked, so I didn't want to spend it on hats. And you know, I knew it. eventually sometime the beer would catch up and. Uh, the jeans wouldn't fit anymore, so I wasn't <laughs> gonna spend money on clothes, you know. So it went towards boots. So. Yeah. Um, and I've I've given some away to. I've got a brother and a dad that wear the same size, which kind of. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm a I'm a little more narrow than they are in the yeah. foot, but they can get away with it. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was cool because it was just hats, and yeah. it was high quality hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, working at Cavaners, you see a lot of three X's, and. Uh, and I know you said you wanted to get into the yeah. X deal. So 3X is like 59 is what they run. Okay. They're going to mainly be kind of your spectrum is you got wool, you've got Rex Rabbit, then you go into Beaver. And then there's other things outside of that. Like we, we make a mink hat, yeah. we make a chinchilla hat, but mm-hmm. for the most part, Beaver is kind of the gold standard. The mink costs more. Chinchilla costs more, but they're not necessarily better hats. So right. kind of how that X system plays is, um, you know, a lot of times from uh, it, it's it's too complicated to get in how it started because yeah. it's all ploy on, you know, it's like when you see a commercial of, uh, oh, it's the lawnmower 3000, you know, that's yeah. all it is now. It's a, it's a marketing ploy because, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, a 20X was a pure beaver hat. Yeah, a fifteen X was a pure beaver hat. Now you don't get to a pure till a hundred X most. Uh, okay, and there's some people that their hundred X isn't even a pure. No, oh, it's a wow. blended hat. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, like with Shorty, she makes it a point. Our X count is our percentage. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like our mean cat and our beaver belly and all that. There's no so X. A fi- yeah. like a fifty X is a fifty if, fifty if, blend. Fifty okay. percent beaver, fifty percent whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, Shorty's always been a big proponent about being as transparent as possible. Hey, this is, this is what it is. We're not lying to you, but, and not saying other companies lie to you, but it's just, it's a standard, but it's a marketing standard. Yeah. Because blends have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you just look at a catalog from 30 years ago, the highest X hat that was in there was a 30 X or a 20 X. Well, now you got a hundred X's and 500 X's and a thousand X's. But, um, so from like a, you know, and some people make two X's, but from like a two X to a five X, most of the time is going to be a pure wool, wool hat. Yeah. Um, and and I tell people wool is like the imitation. So mm-hmm. with leather, you know, you want real cowhide, even right. if it's going to be a, a an exotic print, you want real cowhide just embossed to make it look like ostrich or right. gator or whatever. You still want the real genuine leather. Yeah. So. That's wool is kind of like the imitation felt. So, from six X, they're they're really good if you're like in rain a bunch. Oh yeah, because they'll flop down like this, and then you just go like this, and then they're back shaped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. You know, we were talking about Rip's hat earlier. That's you, yeah. If you want a Rip hat, go get you a three X. <laughs> Throw it, it in the pond. <laughs> dump it in the pond. Take the hat band off of it. You're gonna yeah. get all, good to go. So, yeah. um, and then from like six. To a 10x or 15x, mm-hmm. gonna be mostly Rex Rabbit. Okay, and then as you get to like a 20, then you they most companies. I'm speaking on most companies. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you start blending Rabbit in to Beaver to make it a little bit better hat. And then, like I said, most people's 100x is gonna be a pure Beaver. Um, 
and then above that, most people, if you see a thousand X, five hundred X, that's that's most people's mink or beaver belly, something that's a, a step up of pure. But yeah, um, the X count, yeah, there's there's no. Just kind of depends on the company too. Depends on the company. Yeah, it's and it and it kind of like is uh, when you step up in X's, it's like the stronger it is. Yeah. So um, the felt is a verb too. So how well a fur felts is yeah. it's it's when you felt a hat, that's the process of making a hat. You know, putting it together. So if you look at felt in like a microscope, mm-hmm. it looks like a tiny Christmas tree, right? So beaver fur has a lot of, you know, I think they call them spines, and they hold on to each other. Okay. So I don't know what quality y'all have on, but there's lacquer in in our hats, Mm -hmm. right? And that lacquer is actually what makes it hard. Yeah. But how the quality of the fur is what holds that hat together. You there's hats out there that have no like we make some crushable hats. Don't have no lacquer in them. No lacquer in them. Very little. Yeah. That hat's still going to hold together because the mm-hmm. fur is so good. Right. But the lacquer isn't what makes the hat. And that's what a lot of companies have to rely on is the lacquer because they make it with lower quality fur. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So um, that's why Beaver's kind of the gold standard because it holds, it can hold on to itself without any lacquer. So the lacquer gives it the stiffness for the most part. But if you don't have a good fur, the potential hardness isn't there. Even right. if you roll as much lacquer into that hat as you want to, it's not going to hold. So yeah. hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I was I always wondered. I mean, because from American to Stetson to whatever, it's like, you know, they everybody talks about the X's, and yeah. it's like I don't know. It's all different. Yeah, yeah. it really you got to look at it on a company standpoint. So obviously, a Stetson Five X is going to be a lower quality than a Stetson Ten X. Right. But outside of that, it's really hard because every they're all made close to the same, but the processes and all the little details as far as like how much fur, they weigh out each fur for each hat mm-hmm. to be made. Um, they weigh out the amount of lacquer that's rolled in the hat. So it's all it's all different, their specs, but for the most part, we, they're all built the same. It's just the material and how much lacquer is used. Wow. Okay. Oh, we can, I mean, I can talk about that. <laughs> no, that's, days, yeah, that's, that's perfect. Sweet. I mean, it's... I'm sure a lot of people don't have any idea about it. So. No, and that's, I think, you know, we talk about TikTok, and I think mm-hmm. that's what's pushed. I try to be very informative, and yeah. I have a YouTube channel, too, that oh, that's nice. not very good. But, I, you know, Shorty gives me hell. She's like, why do you teach all your secrets? Like, And I'm, you know, I jokingly tell people, they're like, how'd you get into hats? I'm like, well, I sucked at everything else. <laughs> I failed at everything else. Um, you know, but... In, in all retrospect, you know, I think God gave me a gift. Mm-hmm. Why gatekeep that? Yeah. I try to share as much as I can just because I know when I first started to get it, into it, I couldn't find anything on it. I had to figure it all out myself. Yeah. Well, just because you give out your secrets don't mean that somebody else can do the same thing. Right. That you no, and, right. and people are going to figure it out anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not help them out? Why not better other people's opportunities? And um, like my, like I get one or two in TikTok, Instagram every week. Hey man, how'd you how'd you get started? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I try to answer all of them because it's like for me all the cards fell right. I got yeah. lucky and and Kavner's gave me a real big push and then um so Shorty kind of found out about you through social media and stuff. Yeah, and um some of it derived from um so the the Kavner's are, are there's three brothers that run it mm-hmm. mainly and um, one of the brothers has a, a, a girlfriend, which they, they should be married. They've been together long enough. But being at events, special events and stuff for Kavners, I'd make yeah. good friends with her. Uh-huh. She was a customer of Shorty's. Okay. And she knew I was leaving. She heard the news, and uh, she called Shorty and was like, Hey, you better Shorty had never really seen yeah. me shape hats. She just yeah. knew I managed the events for Kavners. Yeah. And so that's her and Bobby got looking through social media, and I, I kind of always been pretty prominent on there, um, just because I I'd, I'd had material to post because because mm-hmm. Cavaners we did stuff with them, so um, have a material to post, you post it, and then um, it just yeah I kind of grew that kind of Cavaners kind of pushed 
my social media past just kind of being some dude that shapes mm -hmm. and then being with shorties always shaping always being somewhere you, you always you got reach a to, lot of people oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and when i had moved to fort worth that's really um when there's always something to do you're out people meet you you talk to folks and and like i said earlier being at the corporate office you meet folks you talk to them but really where I am now has stemmed from me being in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much me being me, mm -hmm. but because um, I tell people all the time, I might not always be the most liked person in the room, but I, you, you recognize me. Yeah. You know, especially when I had a little bit longer hair. It's like yeah. I'm six three, two fifty, you know, and a foot <laughs> of hair. You know, you become real recognizable. You That's know, right. so yep. just, just God put me in the right spot. Really, yeah. That's awesome. So, That's awesome, man. So. You say that you're in a group of master shapers, master hatters. How well do you know the hat industry? So here's a question for you. Let's do it. Okay. Who was the first person to make or produce a cowboy hat? To, to my knowledge, it's Mr. J.B. Stetson. We have, <laughs> we have a winner. One, one point for the Drake Jones. <laughs> okay, so you knew the man's name. Okay. What year did he start making them? Oh, man. Um, I want to... You don't have it's, to... It's on the boxes for Stetson's. I'm almost positive. I, and I know... So Resist All kind of owns... They don't own Stetson now, but they own the they own the name, the manufacturing yeah. rights yeah. for Stetson hats. And I think Resist All started in 1906, so I want to say it had to have been before that. So 1889, 1830. Oh, oh my goodness! Yeah, John Batterson Stetson, Johnny B. 1813. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said that wrong. I said that wrong. It was 1860. He was born in 1813. Okay. okay. 30. He was eight, born in 1830, and he died in 1906, but he started manufacturing cowboy hats in 1860. So 30 years old. Yeah, he was yeah. 30 years old when he started John B. Stetson. And when did Shorty start? She, you said it was 1990. later. 1990. Yeah. 1990. Well, she's, well, she's 76 now, so okay. um, I guess whatever the math is. I'm yeah. sorry, That's Shorty, a, that yeah. Drake called you out. Yeah. <laughs> she was not us. She, you know, she, when... You know, we, we're on the road so much, and, and our booths are not – they're really fancy setups, yeah. so they're heavy. Yeah. And I jokingly tell people that Shorty only hired me because I'm a big guy and I can set the booth <laughs> up. But, you know, those panels we put up weigh 70 pounds a piece. And, yeah. um, she needed some – Oh, yeah. Some well, it's power. funny because people be like, you set this up by yourself? <laughs> and Shorty be sitting at the little round table, you know, with her martini. And uh, and I'm like, yeah, most of it, you know. They're like, oh, my gosh, it's so hard. And she's like, I, I was doing it for 30 years before he come along, you know. She got it. She got to let you know, you know. Yeah. She's like, well, I can't do it anymore. I'm 76, you know. But um, she's great to work for, man. That's and awesome. anybody that's ever met her, anybody, you know, the only people I've ever heard anything negative from are people that don't really know her. Yeah. They've seen her from a distance, but they don't mm -hmm. know her. Yeah, I don't like personally know her. I just seen her at the booth and talked to her in the store and stuff. If you and know she's that, she's always woman. like the most personable. Oh yeah, like oh, sit there and talk to you for an hour, dude. Like yeah. don't care. Like if she's having a conversation with you and somebody else walks up, yeah. she's gonna continue the conversation with you. Yes, she's like, I'll be with you in a minute. Yes. you know. Yeah, she's uh, she's big on that man, and it's like I was saying it earlier, but uh, it's so much fun to have her in the booth. For one, she feeds you well at night. You made her money that day. She's gonna put a stake in your belly um but but in saying that like just the amount of people that she knows mm -hmm. yeah. like and we'll we'll go to shows and I'll, i've met these people three times can't remember their name and she can tell you their hat size the first year they bought a hat like it's yeah. crazy the amount of knowledge that she's forgot more things than what i know yeah you know that yeah that, kind of that deal Dang. but the amount of people that she knows and like we were talking earlier about some of the celebrities and stuff we've shaped hat it a lot of it stemmed from her just knowing people yeah. like and and being in the business and and treating people well yeah mm -hmm. you know that's that's the biggest deal when you come to shorties and get a hat it's you know everybody really makes a hat about 99 percent the same way you get a pure beaver hat it's a pure beaver hat you know with custom you get a little bit better fit because you're not buying a generic size but yeah 
I think what sets us apart is is the customer service aspect. And uh, I think uh, when I first started with Shorty, she was very prominent on doing things a certain way. Mm-hmm. And she's got enough trust in me how I manage things now. We're like, you know, I'll go do two or three shows, and I'll, the only conversations we really have, because she just kind of lets me do your thing, mm-hmm. you know, is I'll send her sales information. Yeah. You know, and look, you know, and, and typically, like when I call her, she's like, what's wrong? Yeah. Because <laughs> she just kind of freelances me, like, hey, go do your thing. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have somebody so, that has that kind of oh, trust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. And that's, I've worked, I've done a little, little bit of everything, um, kind of here and there, but to have a, and, a, you know, she's an employer, but she's, she's the head of the company, you know, and I know we're small, but, for her to just like sing you out on your own and, mm-hmm. and hey, go, you know, and have all the trust in the world for yeah. you, that's killer for me. Yeah. You know, like any anytime uh someone can have that much trust and and rely on you like that, it means something. You know, right. I feel like I've I've done something right in my life, you know, yeah. if I don't ever get uh, an accolade or a buckle or anything for anything I've ever done, the fact that someone who that's her whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody asks, oh, when's she going to retire? No, that's, it's her. Mm-hmm. You know, that business is shorty. And and for her to just hand things over to you, that's that's her livelihood, man. That's, you know, that's, that's her living every day. That's how she, you know, she takes care of a couple family members of her. So she's not just paying for her bills. She's paying for yeah. a brother and a sister and, and her sister just passed, but. You know, she was doing all this for so long, taking care of family. That's her livelihood. Yeah. So for someone to turn something over to you like that, that's a big, you know, that's a big proponent of the type of trust she has in you. So that's awesome. But. That's cool. Well, yeah, just from seeing your TikToks and just hearing your story and stuff, it's pretty cool to. It's cool. It's really cool. All of our guests that come on, it's just when they explain their story, it's cool to see how. I don't know. You just make all the right steps, or God puts you in the right place, and it just seems like. I don't know. You know, you have that talent to shape hats and stuff, and it's a lifestyle. I feel like people wear it every day. You know, oh, yeah. So I, I'm so critical. Um, I, uh, I run our social media for for shorties and stuff, and I put a video up the other day, and shorty doesn't so much understand all of it, you know. Yeah. But one of the videos I put up, it's a background of someone saying, pretty much, I'm my biggest critic, mm-hmm. even if I think I do well, and I'm. Uh, congratulated. I still don't think I did. I think you could do mm-hmm. better. And I think that's what drives me. It's like mm-hmm. I'm still so, like when I do a hat, I'm so worried about them really liking it. Yeah. Because, it, and it just takes, I mean, like I sold over a thousand hats last year. And, and saying that, you know, it just takes one or two customers to be like, man, I just really don't like the job he did. Mm-hmm. And I'm so down on myself for the next like six months, because yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and and I jokingly say I'm one of the slowest hat shapers there are because, like, we're trying it on at every step. I want you to look at it. Well, it's an art too. Yeah. Like, there's there's so many people that they're hat shapers. Yeah. That work at the 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 local. Yeah. The boot barns and yeah. the cabiners and and uh, they'll like go back there and just tweak it a little bit and. Say, all right, here you go. Yeah. So I walked into our local cavenders the other day, and I don't <laughs> give have me that a, foot pedal. I don't have a I don't have a steamer, and I've done it a million times. Yeah. So I just I I walked back there, and one of the ladies was like, I was like, hey, I was like, I'm gonna borrow your steamer for a little bit. There's like, one here in Rogers. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, all right. So like, I walked back there, and like I'm getting it all tweaked up. It was like right when winter started, so yeah. my hat been setting. So I was tweaking it, and and this lady comes up and was like, you're taking my job. I'm like. No, I just when you spend as much money on a hat, you don't want just somebody just start tweaking on one. Yeah. yeah, like you know. And I sat back there for like ten minutes, and it didn't really need nothing. It just needed your you touch. Know, yeah, just a little bit of little something. A little loving. And, and somebody else looking at it wouldn't have seen that I moved no. anything on it. But it's all in the it, eyes. Yeah, of the holder man. That's that's why I'm <laughs> such a you know. I I hate shipping hats. Like I ship. We talked about Jeff Lee earlier. I shipped him his hat. And I measured it like bubble wrap. <laughs> oh well, we just, you know, I really wanted to do it with him there, mm-hmm. and that's why he ordered that little Jiffy steamer from Amazon. So I come over. I just couldn't get over there yeah. before NFR. Um, but uh, I, 
I did, we measured it. We did like, we put a ruler on it and everything. And it was still just, and it's so hard until it's on someone's head. It yeah, could be perfect. Yeah. It might just be just barely oh, off. Yeah. And, and like a, that much on a hat looks like four inches to me. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you're, you've got two viewpoints, right? Yeah. Well, when I'm looking at you, you know, you're looking through a mirror. Yeah. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Like that's when I shake my hats. Like every step, it's on my head. I'm in the mirror. I've got heat on it. I'm torquing on it. You know, doing all kinds of stuff. But it's, I'm so critical of that, and yeah. I think that's what makes me not better than others, but better. Mm -hmm. You know, better hat shaper instead of just being like, "Hey, I think it looks good." No, I want you to think it looks good. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, I've had people that they'll buy the hat and they'll leave, and then I hear from you know, around the way, oh, you did so-and-so hat. They don't like it. I'm like, well, why didn't you say something? Right. Yeah. All it does is take, hey, can we just yeah. tweak yeah. this one thing? Yeah. You so always get public always get. service announcement here. Tell your hat shaper what's wrong. Don't just take it and leave and bad mouth. Yes. So, yeah. Well, I was going to say adding to that. I He's a bad mouther I, with hat shapers. <laughs> no, I am not a bad mouther. <laughs> I, I'm just shy when it comes to like, because I don't ever really know until we went to, to uh, Wickenburg and I got, yeah. got it done. Like, I... I actually love wearing cowboy hats, but if I don't have like a good shape, they're like, "Oh, how's it looking?" I'm like, "Oh, it looks good," because he's yeah. been spending so much time on it. I feel bad, so I'm like, "Oh, it's fine." Well, and then I don't end up wearing it. But now I love wearing like when you find a good shape and it, it feels good on well, you. Yeah. yeah. What was that was, guy's name in Wickenburg? John. I don't know. He'd hate us what? for forgetting his name, but he there at NRS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. He was yeah. in a horse wreck. Um, really cool dude. He's super I don't think cool. I know him. He he commented on our TikTok. Yeah. I, I haven't ever. He don't have his uh his name on here. CJ. That's him though. CJ. CJ. Okay, I've seen this. You seen him before? Yeah, but I didn't know he shaped. Yeah, that's he, awesome. He don't have any videos of him shaping, but yeah, he just sat there. Really he, cool dude. He's an announcer. Um, he just shapes it in our S just for yeah. like a little pass. Well, he's just yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, y'all know what um uh, I just went blank uh. Kelly bits, Kerry Kelly. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. So the guy that does all like that does what I do for Shorty for him, his name's Gary Weiss. Mm -hmm. Weiss. Um, he like he goes out and sits at Wickenburg for like eight weeks mm -hmm. and just pulls up at which you know like Rio Rancho Vista, Rio. And Rancho Rio and stuff like that. But like wherever the jackpot is that morning, he pulls up, sets mm -hmm. up, and that's uh, his boss tells him to. Like his cooler has to stay full of beer. So if y'all are at the Patriot, he'll be set up at the Patriot. Oh, he yeah. will always if, have beer if, in that uh, cooler. If you need refreshments. Yeah, U S T R C. That's it, man. Shout out, uh, Gary. He's he's cool, man. I like Gary a bunch. Yeah. So and he's been around forever too. So yeah, he he's kind of one of those guys that if you hang out with Gary, you're gonna meet people. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's always someone coming up or yeah. You know. One of my buddies is one of their. Like big endorsees, Blake Tolliver. Yeah. Real, yeah, 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 horses. yeah. Yeah. Man, they've got, I mean, they've, they've got stuff for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, you know, un, unfortunately, I hadn't been on back a horse in like three years. But like, I know if I was, if I was getting back into it, that's where I was going. Cause oh, yeah. they've got the people that, are sweet too. Oh, man, they've got people that, that do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've got business in the barrel racing. I know they do a ton of uh, team roping stuff, but man, like, I've, They've got people that do cow horse cutting, you know, it's um which they're based out of Weatherford, so yeah. it's you know right cutting horse world capital. capital, you know. So all right, so if someone is wanting to look at your TikTok or if I mean if does Shorty have a website? Uh we do have a website and that's you can do some ordering on there. It's hard to order a custom hat. Yeah. Without yeah, being, in, being person, in person. But we have a ton of people that do it and I'm like, I, I get it on my social media all the time, and I normally just tell people, call the shop. Because yeah. when I'm not there, I am I'm I do the social media stuff, but it's when you're three hours from the factory, it's hard to push things. So right. mm -hmm. you can get the shop's web, or you can get the, the factory's website. It's just shortieshattery.com. Okay. Um, social media is kind of the same thing. Some of them, I think Facebook is Shorty's Cowboy Hattery. That's our little play on Cowboy, you know. Uh, but I think just about everything else is just Shorty's Hattery. Okay. And for anybody watching that knows Shorty, it's <laughs> the personal page and the business page are two different deals. <laughs> I get people all the time that like, I'm assuming they think Shorty runs the Instagram account. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, Miss Shaw, so-and-so passed away. We need to get together. And, and I just got to the point now where I like, 
I send them Shorty's phone number because if oh, yeah. if they're sending that, they know yeah. we're personal enough yeah. to kind of push <laughs> to, have, but, to have her phone number. But, um, <laughs> hey, Aunt Patsy passed away. Yeah. Just to let you know. Yeah, yeah. I know. You got life uh, ending things going on, yeah. or, or you know, and they're hitting up the Instagram account. But um, uh, yeah, just Shorty's Hattery. Okay. Um, we don't have a TikTok, but I have mine. I yeah, think what's it's your just TikTok? The Drake underscore Jones, I think is what it is. And I think that's Drake what uh, Instagram and all that stuff is. So cool. I get a ton of people that ask about, oh, do you have like inspiration, like shapes and stuff? And uh-huh. um, nobody looks at them apparently. But, you know, on Instagram, you've got the highlights. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I've literally got it split up between oh. fashion hats, cowboy hats. Uh, there's a few videos of a full shape on there, so yeah. you can see the whole thing. Of course, I've got my personal stuff too. Yeah. But. So if guys are guys or gals are wanting to get ideas on how they want yeah. their hat shaped, they go can to your the highlights, go to your Instagram, go to your Instagram, and go to there's, the highlight cool, man. There's hundreds. I actually just recently, you know, because you can see the little dots on the yeah. top of the screen. I realized there was way too many, <laughs> and there were some from like eight years ago on there. Oh, wow. so I was like. I feel like I've gotten a little better since then. So some of them I got to looking at, and I was like, those shapes are still pretty cool, but let's, yeah. like, because, you know, with new and fresh. what I call like a, a cowboy shape, like a, a true Western style shape, yeah. there's there's only so many. You know, right. the brim can always be different. It can be flared. That's I hate putting names. Everybody wants to put, oh, the JB or this. Yeah. The crowns are all pretty distinct <clears throat> for the most part. You know, like I wear a brick on most of my stuff. About 80% of what we yeah, do is just a standard cattleman's. Yeah. Um, I think it supports my big head a little better. You yeah, know? that's my deal. Like you, Cattleman's looks you've too got little. West Texas Punch, I think, is what I see up there. Yeah, I have no idea. Nothing on the top, just the two dimples. Yeah. Yeah, it's two little dimples. Yeah, some people could just call it I like it that a, tall crown, though. Yeah. I don't know. I, I even, even on one of y'all's, you had it just completely open, didn't you? Yeah, when you had oh. your tan hat. Oh, yeah, the tan, tan hat. hat used to, yeah. Rock it, man. Yeah, I think I think I fi- had a CJ fix that. Oh, you, I think about you put the, the dimple in both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so puncher, reach and grab. I've always called it a West Texas punch, but yeah. W. I'm have to remember that. So next time I go in there, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need the West Texas yeah. punch up. Dude, top. we have Tell our them. personal hat shaper yeah, right down the WTP, right, baby. Yeah. So <laughs> the uh, official hat shaper of everything rodeo, Mr. Drake come Jones. On. I'm here for it. I'm here Let's for go. it. Let's go. So cool. Well, uh, what is the first song that comes to your mind when I hear? For the most part, well, does it need to be a little more upbeat though? Anything it can be anything. Can, I mean, Dude, we, we could cry together. Well, I was just thinking, I, I, where I grew up, I grew up real close to Cody Johnson. Okay, had a good friend that was his merch guy when he first started going. Shout out, uh, Colton Snow. But um, in saying that, dear rodeo man, oh my dear goodness. rodeo, I think dude, have you heard the one? Have you heard the one with Reba with him? No. Oh, did it? That, that have you seen rendition? his documentary? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I the, cried. I freaking cried like a baby. The only thing that that I didn't like about it is there's not a single thing like he's had the exact same band members the entire time. Yeah, and they yeah. didn't say nothing about that. Say nothing. About oh man, the rocking CJB, man, dude. I seen them. I bought the tickets for five dollars at George's Majestic. Yeah. Oh, okay. back in like what? Back two in, years ago? Three years ago? No, like probably longer ten years than that. ago. Oh, dude. really? He's like been, I was six. Playing I was rodeo sixteen. Houston. I was sixteen. I just got my truck that I could drive by myself, uh-huh. and I had like twenty dollars to my name. And one of my buddies had some tickets, and he said, "I'll sell them to you for five bucks." Yeah. And I'm oh, like, man. "Heck yeah, I'm going." Yeah. <laughs> dude, we we used to go to like down to the country club to go dancing. Yeah. And we we uh. We like re- we was like, hey, can you play dance for Vista? Home? No, you said country club. Well, not the golf course. I'm, ta- oh. I'm talking. Oh, the, my bad. I'm talking like. <laughs> <laughs> you know where my mind is. We're going dancing into the golf yeah. course. <laughs> no, but I asked. I was like, you know, whiskey. This was yeah, yeah, whiskey, and it was like oh, 101. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was like probably shoot is before I went on my mission. It had been 2013, 2012, or I guess 2014, somewhere in there. I was 18, 19 years yeah. old. You know, so. If, However many years that is, but yeah, we we asked, we was like, "Can you play?" And they're like, "Who? Yeah, what? You know?" And then now it's like, "Oh, he's huge, man!" That's Cody bad. Johnson. Everybody knows him. Oh man, oh, yeah. when he that first year, you know, he filled in at Rodeo Houston. I think that's yeah. where, yeah, you know, he played. That's where of, he got. He big. sold it out the yep. first year, like eighty six thousand mm-hmm. people. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Which where he grew up up there, he Trinity, Texas, which is about an hour north of Houston, uh, probably a little more than that. But he went to school in Groveton. Okay. 
So funny enough, me and my wife were down visiting my parents, and they still live down there. And we went to Madisonville, Texas, to eat lunch with a buddy of mine that that's from Houston. That was kind of a midway point for us. But we drove by the Madison County or uh, yeah, Madison County Fairgrounds where. That was the first time I watched Kojo play, and yeah. he still plays it. Yeah, that's cool. But I remember there was about eighty-five people there that night because it was real cold. They had, you know, the heat lamps up, yeah. or whatever. And uh, I went with a buddy of mine. Of course, you know, Caitlin don't listen, but we were chasing girls in Madisonville, Texas. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it was like three dollars to get in, and I, I remember actually thinking like, "Oh, this guy's not." Yeah, <laughs> y'all didn't hear that, but like, and but I I grew to like him just because he was always in the area. Yeah, you know, I grew up going to bars in College Station in in Huntsville, Texas. Shout out shenanigans, yeah. nasties. I know people in that area. All know these shout outs are gonna have to start paying us. Oh man, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. We need paid endorsements. So. Um, growing up, he was always in those areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He played. He played Hurricane Harry's in College Station. I watched him there like six times. Yeah. yeah. We kind of talked about like Pat Green breaking out of Texas country. But yeah. Really, Cody Johnson was who put Texas country red yeah. dirt on the map. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they created red dirt from that, I feel like. I think he just – well, he stayed true to what he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like – I hate when people are like, oh, he signed, he changed his music. If you go look at the music it's he's exactly put out – the same. Well, if – He's put out hundreds of songs, mm-hmm. right? You they can't all sound the same. You right. got you got, a, got to you got to branch. mold and change. Yeah, but they, you got they, to branch. It's, it's still it's all it's, it's still to his roots. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that it's still country music. Yeah, I mean we were talking about you know the Bob Fice Invitational. He mm-hmm. comes and ropes at it. Oh yeah, he was there last year. Yeah, he I, come he he's been the last three years and the the first year he came he played a concert at the at the host hotel after that too Randall King opened up for him that's oh, awesome that's cool. it was like a free concert yeah, yeah. like i love like <laughs> Randall King Cody Johnson does it get any better than yeah. that and know? Cody Johnson he's like shorty like you just sit there and talk to him he's going to talk to you like any Dude, normal yeah. person um the good buddy of mine that that kind of does what i do for shorties for resist all he's mm-hmm. friends with him cuz yeah. he builds his hats for him and yeah. stuff but um his name's Joe but that's I've been around Cody a bunch because of Joe. Like mm-hmm. we've been in the, um, you know, and we were talking about the industry being so small. And there's not a whole lot of enemies in the industry. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I joke about hat shapers all having a little bit of of, um, you know, the the word now is riz. We all have a little riz about ourselves, yeah. but I, we're all a little cocky. You got to be. Yeah, like you've got to have some mm-hmm. confidence through what you're doing. But um, in saying that. Like we're all cool with each other. Like I can't tell you how many times. And if you guys got a problem, you're just gonna take it out the parking lot. And yeah. Be friends afterwards. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's <laughs> I jokingly uh, tell Joseph all the time. I'm like, Joe, you're my best friend. I'm, I'm not your best friend, but you're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like I've been in the Resist All Suite at Rodeo Houston, and, yeah. and we've done stuff with the American Crew, and like uh, it's just a it, it's so small. Like you can't yeah. be enemies. Not saying right. I want to, but yeah. We're all the same people for the yeah. most part. We grew up doing the same deal, and um, I, you know, I think probably about ninety nine percent of the hat shapers are, are failed rodeo folks. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> just so we, we just up. couldn't make it. You know, that's right. So, all right, let's play some deer rodeo. Come on, let's hear it. Oh, snap, dude! I'm gonna start crying. I got chills. <laughs> I got chills for sure. Yeah. All right. Dear Rodeo, I'd be lying if I tried to tell you I don't think about you. After all the miles and the wild nights that we've been through, Lord knows we had a few. Dear Rodeo, I'd like to say that I took the reins and rode away. No regrets, no left unsaid, just turn the page. Oh, but you know better, babe. Between the low most atoms and broken bones, the dream of a buckle I'll never put on, I'm jaded. Whoa, I hate it. But somehow the highs outweigh the lows, and I do it all again. 
Even though we both know I'd still have to let you go So dear Rodeo Well thank y'all for checking in, sticking around And listening to another episode of the Everything Rodeo Podcast We'd like to thank Drake Jones for coming on the show Another round of applause sure. There you go oh, Thank, thank y'all you, for sure yeah, Make sure if, oh. if you guys are needing a hat, be sure to check out Shorty's Cowboy Hattery yeah, in uh, Oklahoma City. Uh, maybe we could, uh, I could put a schedule up of, of where we're going to be and stuff like that. So um, y'all can come check us out. I'll, I'll be in Fort Worth for the next two weeks. I know everybody's kind of been in town for stock show and they're gone, yeah. but next two weeks for the Cow Horse World Championships and then a month in Houston for Rodeo Houston. So if you're in the area, come check us out. Heck yeah. Cool. Sweet. Well, make sure you're subscribed, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Heck yeah. Pop out. We're there done. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. That's what I'm looking for. Hell yeah, man. Between the almost atoms and broken bones, the dream of a bubble I'll never put on, I'm jaded. I, my grandpa used to tell me two things, and then you write this on stone. This is good. You spend about 80% of your life on your back or on your feet. So spend money on two things, boots and a mattress. That's good. That's good, dude. Shoot, man. Put that in stone right yeah. there, old son. It's good, Stamp man. it. It's good.